Hey everyone, it's Deacon082, and welcome back to Pokemon Emerald Water Type Challenge. In the last episode, we reached Route 119, and this route has some really tall grass and pretty much constant rain. And what this constant rain means is that we can send in pretty much any water type and just dominate with Surf. Basically, anything that isn't resisted will die in one hit. But anyway, there are these trainers in this grass area. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. And they are called the Mimic Circle. And what they do is they just walk around kind of weirdly and they'll attempt to mimic your moves, but they can only do it if they can see you, which means that it's actually really easy to engage them in battle. But they're everywhere, so... And they mostly have bug Pokemon, so they're pretty easy to take out. And once again, with the rain, it's really easy. So, I taught a few moves. Well, I learned a few moves off-screen, because I did a little bit of training to get Paul up to about... Yeah, why am I saying about? To get him to exactly 26. And I did the same training for Taiwan. But Paul learned Dragon Rage at 25, which I taught in place of Splash, I think. And I also taught it Secret Power with a TM, because Secret Power is uh, much better than Tackle, and a physical attack on Gyarados is really nice to have. So, um, I might not show it off here just because it's so easy to take things out in the rain, but it has a different effect based on where you are. Like, I guess I'll show it right now. Uh, in this really tall grass, it resembles Razor Leaf, but what it resembles doesn't matter. It's still a normal type move, 70 power, but it has a different effect based on where you are. I believe in tall grass, it has a chance of putting the opponent to sleep. In normal grass, it has a chance of poisoning. It can uh, make them flinch in certain areas. It's just a really useful move, and it's a 30% chance. Like here, we get sleep, so... That actually makes Secret Power the only move in the game with a secondary effect of sleep. Which is really nice. It's before uh, Dark Void came out in Gen 4. But you have to be in the tall grass for it to work, which actually means this is a really good place to train how to train your Gyarados. Just go in this really tall grass and find Wild Tropius level 26. These guys are pretty badass. I like them. Um, we can use Secret Power. It's also kind of helpful for catching Pokemon, but there's only a few routes for this tall grass that you can use it on, so I guess you can catch wild Pokemon in here easier. But look, even though Gyarados' physical attack is so much better than its special attack, and Tropius resists Surf, we still did that much damage. Tropius is actually really defensive too, so that's just how, how helpful this rain is. Okay, so Tropius goes down. They're pretty good at experience, so I'll fight them if I can find them. But anyway, just making it through the Mimic Circle, and these guys all have bugs, and so many of them have, like, the really weak bugs. Like, this one has Wurkle, Cascoon, and Dust Dots, I believe. The last one had Wurkle, Silcoon, and Beautifly. I just don't see the point in having those unevolved Pokemon along with an evolved one, but I guess they're showing off the whole evolutionary line, which is never really a great idea. But, um, Duskots might survive this because it's got good special defense, so it actually survives it and then some. Um, Dragon Rage, I don't know how useful it'll be, but it's a fixed 40 damage move, which at this point in the game it's not too bad, but usually our other moves will end up doing more, so... I probably won't use it too much, and we just walk by a trainer. I can't see because my hair is in my eyes. I I should probably get a haircut. Like, I don't know how girls do it, have hair completely covering their eyes all the time, but somehow a Zigzagoon survives a surf. I, I did not see that coming. But okay, maybe that is a super powerful Zigzagoon. Okay, this, I believe, is the last one. He has a Ninkata, or a Ninkata. And this guy is, in fact, weak to Surf as well. So, in addition to putting rain that makes water types absolutely dominate, you have a Pokemon that is weak to water moves. That is uh, not, good, not a good place to train something that's weak to water moves if 
opposing trainers are just going to come in and use water moves on you. Um, yeah, so this route is one of the longest in the game, and it, it will probably take several episodes to get through here. But there are also a bunch of items. Here is a Hyper Potion. I believe there might be some more items hidden in the grass, like... On the bottom left of the screen there, there was a one square of out in the open between the grass, so there was probably something there. And usually pretty good items are hidden in spaces like that. So, I'll check it out, and we'll probably give some of our other Pokémon a chance to shine, because Paul has been dominating this episode so far. Peru just grew to level 28. You know, he could actually be pretty decent here as well. There's a full heal. And we're out of the grass. So, okay, we'll go to Taiwan next because Paul got all the time to shine and now it is Taiwan's turn. Um, what is in this house? Oh boy, um, somebody likes wing dolls. The Cave of Origin. Yeah, that is somewhere. This guy says that there's an HM move called Fly, which if you didn't know that, then, then I don't know what to tell you. But Fly lets you fly back to any city or town that you've already been to. And we don't actually have it, but we have a Pokemon that can use it. But there's some stuff over here. Like, just alternate areas with Fishermen and Magikarps. And I believe this guy also has another Pokemon that's really interesting that's not Magikarp. So we'll see if we can get some rollouts out on this. Yeah, I don't think rollout's gonna work too well just because Magikarp's actually not too bad on the physical defense side, so I'm just gonna roll with Surf. He also has a tentacle, so rollout is better for this guy. So that's why I kinda hoped we could get it built up, but didn't work out. As long as he doesn't poison us, we should be fine because this might die in two hits. Yes, it does. That is pretty good. And that stuff, yes it is. He has a Feebess. And if you don't know about Feebess, well, Feebess is maybe the rarest Pokemon to find in the wild in any game. And pretty much every game it's in, it's the rarest Pokemon. And that guy has a Feebess. You can actually find them on this route but I am not going to try for a while, just because I don't feel like spending that time right now. But how to find Feebas? I'll probably spend an entire episode covering it, but you need to fish on this route, and there is a chance of finding Feebas in pretty much every square of water on this route. But the problem is you're not going to find them. But Abigail, won't find him either because all of her Pokemon get away from her. Okay, up here. Now, you've noticed, you've probably noticed some of these larger trees on the routes, if I can get away from this Oddish. And these trees are actually used for making secret bases. They're actually giant clumps of grass. But now that we have secret power, we can actually dig holes in here and make our own little secret bases. So, I think I'm gonna choose this one because it's in a kind of isolated spot. Off screen, I picked up a few items for decorations. Basically, you have to have uh, some kind of table of sorts to put decorations on because it won't let you set them on the ground because they'll just get dirty. So, let's get a few bricks out here, try to arrange it kind of evenly. Or we could just, like, put them all over here. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do yet, but how many spaces are between there? I like this. And then, let's find our dolls that we've got. Put a mural over here on this blue one. Um, how about a mug kit front and center? And then a low tad all the way over here. So, this is our secret base. I also picked up a few just dumb little things like balloons. These things are kind of cool. I suppose we'll put them in front of our in front of our tables. They're actually bricks, but it works. So what these balloons do, you step on them and they burst. So that's kind of cool. 
you can't really interact with the dolls or anything, but they're just there for decoration. Um, yeah, that's about all there is to do with secret bases, unless you link up. Which, um, I'll leave that a surprise, because it's really hard to link up with this game in particular, just because it's a Gen 3 game, and you had to have a link cable, you can't just do it over Wi-Fi like in the more recent games. But, yeah, that's what secret power is. This guy just tells us you can make a secret base, but... There are many different paths to go here. There are some berries. Um, I think we'll head this way. Nope, there's just another secret base place. Now, if you have the acro bike, you can actually take a little shortcut over here, but we can't really get across there, so um, we'll have to come back later with the acro bike. They have a few places in the game like that where you have to have one bike or the other in order to reach it. But all you can find there is just like more secret bases and some items. So you're not missing anything by not going that way. But um, there are a few more trainers here. Let's go for Taiwan because Taiwan hasn't done as much as Paul did in this episode. It's a Pokemon Ranger. She has a Gloom out first. And normally I would switch out because a grass type is dangerous, but with Surf this powerful I think we'll be fine even though it resists our moves. And we can always use like Astonish or Roll Out or something. But the critical hit's nice. Bloom goes down and next up is a Roselia. I think I actually will switch and we'll go to Stamps. Stamps is now our highest level and we'll probably stay that way for a while because the three I deposited a few episodes back were all at level 30. And Stamps has already passed them, and is the highest in our team, so... Yeah. Um, now I guess we'll heal that poison. Um, where are my antidotes? Here they are! Nope, we are not going to heal Stamps' poisoning. Uh, sorry, I got a test and I just looked over. Alright. Here is another trainer. I actually didn't want to fight this guy because I have a feeling we're going over on time. So I think we'll stop after this guy. This is Breloom. I used one of these in uh, Leaf Green. Breloom is a really strong Pokemon. And I think we just got ourselves killed by locking ourselves into rollout there. Mog Punch is very powerful, has priority. But the thing... The easy way to deal with these is to just have a flying type attack because Breloom is grass and fighting, which means it's four times weak to flying, which makes it really easy to take out. So, um, this guy wants a rematch, but I think we're going to end this episode here because if we look at our map now, as you can see, we're about halfway through this route, and there's still a ways to go. We'll pass the Weather Institute, which is a nice landmark, and eventually we'll reach Fortree City, which is a really nice place if you haven't seen it. So, this has been Deacon082 with Pokemon Emerald Water Type Challenge, and I will see you guys next time when we continue our trek towards Fortree City.